Good morning and good afternoon to each of you in the sanctuary and to those who are joining us by way of Facebook and YouTube. We once again thank God for you, um, for sharing with us, for praying with us, for being a part of this ministry. we got another awesome lesson um, in store for you today. But before we do that, a few announcements. Um, let's keep uh, Sister Barbara Jordan, uh, Sister Gloria Clayton, and Sister Rosie uh, Jordan. Uh, let's keep them in prayer. Their brother uh, has transitioned, uh, and a memorial service will be held Saturday, May 13th in Mississippi. So let's keep those uh, sisters in prayer. Additionally, we will have our leadership uh, meeting on this Saturday at 10. So uh, we expect all leaders, obviously, to be there. Uh, there's going to be some, um, I know we've got a few people that will not be there. So you, you will receive, if you're here on Sunday, because um, we've got some homework. So you'll receive the homework. So if you can't make the meeting, then make sure you see Sister Jeanette Williams on Sunday. Because she will have your uh, our th lesson and there's some homework there. Okay? This Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. All right? <coughs> being a good witness. We've been talking for a few weeks now about being um, a good witness. Remember when we started evangelism principle number five, uh, we started uh, with the question, what is a good witness? Remember? And what we did is we looked in the Beatitudes and found out what a good witness is according to Jesus. In the Beatitudes, around Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, Jesus referred to us as salt, and he referred to us as light, right? Read that for us once again, Dr. Matthews. I read it, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewithal shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which are in heaven. So then, in describing the Christian as the salt of the earth, our Lord provides a powerful illustration of the impact and the impression we are to be making on the society in which we live. Consider now a few characteristics of salt. Because remember, Jesus said we are the salt of the earth. And I told you a couple of weeks ago how vital salt is and, and, and all that stuff about salt first of all salt is visible so then if Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth then our ministry is to a lost and dying world we are to win lost souls and establish them in the faith so the only way that we can accomplish this is to be a visible part of our society. We are not to hide within the confine of the four walls of the church building. Totally isolate, isolated from the rest of the world. Remember in the Great Commission, 
Jesus told us to go out, go ye therefore, right? Salt, again, does no good if it's left in the shaker, right? I'm good, devil, but I don't, I, don't, I don't need that. So we must remember with salt, no contact, no impact, right? So to be impactful, then we got to make some kind of contact. Now, here's the thing. Salt is visible, but an interesting thing about salt is that when it's used, it loses itself. You don't see salt in your food because it makes its contribution and then it's gone. You don't just pour salt on something and leave it there. You stir it and mix it so there's not a glob of salt on it. So even though salt is in there and it's impacting and influencing the taste, you don't see it. Because let me help you. Charmaine, if you see salt, it, don't eat it. It's way too salt. You shouldn't see it. <laughs> I mean, that's like overload. When salt is used in various chemical processes, it dissipates, Sister Irvin, after fulfilling its purpose. Salt. You see it. They use it on icy highways. It makes winter travel safe, and then it disappears. Right? You see the truck. You may have been behind one, and the truck is spitting it out or dispersing it, and you may see it momentarily. But once you drive it and it gets down in there, you don't just keep seeing salt on the road. In the same way, Christians who are the salt of the earth don't hesitate to give of themselves without the need to be seen. Okay, so salt is visible, right? And then, not only salt is visible, salt is valuable. And I'm going to show you in a minute uh, just how valuable you are and we are as, as salt. Salt is valuable. Jesus has chosen us as believers to do his work here on the earth. Now, Odessa, think about that. Now, Jesus could have chose a tree, a boat, a monkey, anything. He chose us, those who are imperfect, those who are under construction, those who do everything that he say do the opposite. He chose us to representing him. He didn't send angels down. He chose us as believers to do his work here on the earth. John 15, 16, watch what that says. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. I have appointed you to go, to produce fruit that will last, and to ask the Father in my name to give you whatever you ask for. Now, watch this. Jesus chose us. Jesus chose us. He, he knew you and chose you. He knew the mistakes you was going to make and he chose you, us. <clears throat> he knew we wouldn't always be obedient and he chose us. He knew we would do things opposite of his word <laughs> and he chose us. He knew it. He chose us under the bridge in a stockpile of trash and said, that's who I want to do my bidding on the earth. He chose us. Now, when you're chosen, that means somebody wants you. One of the worst things in the world uh, that people can't deal with is this fact of rejection. Because rejection means you wasn't chosen. He chose us. He chose you, which means he wanted you. There are certain things here that you don't get chosen for. I told you before, uh, Deacon Williams when we went out for uh, basketball uh, at Hillside but even when we got to Central and we got you know up there with the big boys if you will they were called the tryouts right and, and Dr. Matthews I, I mean I, I'm, I, ain't, <laughs> I ain't bragging toot my own horn but I ain't never tried out I knew I, that wasn't for me Try. I went because we all had to go but I knew I wasn't trying out you, you understand what I'm saying I, I'm like okay uh, everybody has to do it so it, it, it may have been and I'm literally I'm not exaggerating it may have been like a hundred people came out so Coach Jackson, 
Jackson took us all in the vestibule, the area out there, and he gave some criteria. He said, I don't want no dope smokers. I don't want no beer drinkers. This ain't Saturday morning at the Y. I don't want no dummies if you ain't doing good in the class. And he said this literally, I'm going to turn my back, and then all y'all that in that category leave. And literally about 50 people left. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So we tried out, we ran and did all that stuff. And then Dr. Matthews, on the day, on cut day, after weeks of running, and because we, we ran and we didn't even see a ball for about th a month. That's why a lot of people quit. They just wanted to shoot. But he wanted to get us in shape. So after we practiced and did all this, he said, after school, when the bell rings, you can come down and there will be a, if your name is not on the, Sheet in the locker room. It wasn't outside where everybody can see it, everybody, but everybody can see it because it was in the locker room. He said, Then you're not on the team. Andrew, myself, Ma uh, Steve, I mean, the start, the people, we didn't go down there. Like, I'm not, I mean, I'm on the team. I know that. I'm not being <laughs> team to be, I'm, I'm not trying out. That's for the other people. So we didn't go down there. But the point I'm making, people came back this way crying because they were not chosen so not being it hurt some people like because they took it personal like man I wouldn't I wouldn't good enough and that's not bad if it's, you're dealing with a sport but when you think about you're not good enough as a person Jesus the point I'm making chose us and you don't even think you're worth nothing he said but I do I think you're worth something because I don't choose junk. Number one, I don't make junk. So he chose us. And if that don't let you know right there you got value, then I don't know what else to say to you. He chose us. I know a lot of people, because they told me, a lot of my friends and stuff that I grew up with, if they could have chosen, they said they ain't no one in the world they'd have chose their family. And if they could go back. Now think about that. Like, because Dr. Matthew, after all that happened, and God said, you can be a gauge or who open all them people, I would still, looking back on my life, I would pick mom and dad. I wouldn't have picked nobody ahead. I'd pick my same mama, and I'd pick my same daddy. But a lot of people said, ain't nowhere in the world I'd do that. Value, that's how valuable we are to God. We have great value to him. But, but not only are we of value to the Lord, but we are also great value to the world, although they may not realize it or they may not recognize it. And I'm going to show you how valuable we are and you are, right? Now, not only is salt, what's the first one? Visible, valuable, but it's vital. Dean Henry is vital. Now, as I said a few weeks ago, Telling a 20th century person that he or she is the salt of the earth means little if anything. We don't talk like that no more. Well, we say, Sister Irvin, Sister Tina, now that that person is worth their weight in gold. We're familiar with that. But like, you go up to somebody talking about, man, you're worth your weight in salt. They'd be like, what are you talking about? But the original hearers, they would recognize the ultimate compliment for they understood that this statement, watch this, was directly tied to their importance in life. For example, the religious ritual demanded, watch this, and I'm going to take you on a journey in a minute. The religious ritual demanded that all sacrifices be salted before they were offered to God. So in other words, Joyce, you couldn't even worship God without salt. Remember now, he's saying you're the salt of the world, right? Whew. Watch this. Let me go back. Um, um, uh, let me do this and then I'll get Deborah what I need here newborn babies were rubbed with salt a grain of salt placed in a tooth cavity was the usual remedy for a toothache now I'm talking back obviously now they, you got all kind of you know liquor and dope to get it a grain of salt again placed in the cavity was the usual remedy for a toothache if a bull gored a farmer, salt was the remedy to cure and to halt infection. Salt. Right? Now, 
Let me go back, and, and, and now I need this devil because I'm getting ready to show you where I said earlier, you cannot worship God without salt, right? God called you and me salt of the earth, right? So if you can't worship, and I'm going to show you this scripturally. So if you can't worship God without salt, then the world can't worship God without you and me. Because the world does not understand what worship is. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to prove my point. We're talking about worship. Okay. The word worship comes from the Middle English worth-ship. Worth-ship. From which we get the word worth Ship, which comes down to us as worship okay now a lot of times people in church get worship and praise mixed up worship has to deal with estimation praise has to do with articulation so your worship can be in silence but your praise can never be in silent because it's praise which means it's articulated y'all with me okay now watch this the word worship from worship to worship to worship has to do with estimation and esteeming right it's placing a value upon something okay now watch this I'm going to give you a few scriptures here Dr. Matthews you read those for us John uh, chapter 4 verses 19 through 24 you got 19 through 2 John chapter 4 watch this now watch this now remember I'm, I'm driving home the point of how valuable you and I are to, to Christ to, to God to Jesus Christ he said we are the salt of the earth and I'm telling you Bonner people can't worship God without us because they need us to guide them and lead them in worship. Watch this. Dr. Matthews, read that. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Now, this is John chapter 4. Remember, Jesus is talking to the woman at the well, who's a Samaritan, right? Watch this. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. Now, watch what she said. She said, Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. Watch, keep going. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me. Watch this. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Now watch this. Watch what Jesus says to her in verse 22. Watch this. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Now remember, Charmaine, I told you, people, put that back there, but 22, yeah. You couldn't worship God without salt. We're the salt of the earth. Here's a woman who just told Jesus, well, we worship over here on Mount Gerizim. Jesus just told her, he said, woman, you don't even know what you're doing. Look at the verse. He said, you worship, you know not what. Translate that. He says, you don't even know what you're doing. He said, for salvation is of the Jews. 23 and 24, watch this. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers... Now, you see what he says? He says, true worshipers. Now, he just told the lady, you're not a true worshiper because you don't even know what you're doing. He said, yeah, y'all going to the temple. Yeah, y'all going in there thinking y'all having church. He said, that's the problem. Y'all having church, but you ain't worshiping. You know why? Because you don't know how. I'm showing you how valuable we are. I'm taking you on a trip. Keep going. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now watch what verse 24 says. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. God is not black. He ain't white. He ain't Indian. He, 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 he's a, God is a spirit. You see that? And what, Dr. Matthews? And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
the Samaritans were not worshiping him in spirit and in truth and God told the woman y'all don't even know what y'all doing because now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Bible to see what the Bible means God said the father seeks worship right to be esteemed and he said those that worship him must worship him in two things what were they spirit grace and in truth right now let's go to the scriptures to see what spirit and truth is since he said we must worship him in spirit and in truth he didn't say we must worship him in shouting now here's the thing there is nothing wrong with shouting because that's an articulation but the problem is when if you don't know what you're shouting about so it ain't the shout that that's wrong it's not knowing why you're shouting you just, they're they doing it over there. Hey, ah, Shabbat. Now, let's use the Bible to see what spirit and in truth is. First scripture, you can write these down, John 6, 63. Dr. Matthew is going to read that for us. Watch this. Because Jesus said, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, let's find out what spirit and truth is. Watch this. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Odessa, he said, you got to worship me in spirit and in truth. And now he said, the words that I speak to you are spirit. You see that? And life. All right. Now, we got spirit taken care of. And he said, spirit and in truth. Now, let's look at John 17, 17. Watch this. Sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. And what is truth? Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. So what he says, Andrew, if you're going to worship me, Sheena, in spirit and in truth, you're going to have to worship me according to the word by the word. Because he just said the word is spirit. I showed you that in John 6, 63. And then the word, the, the, the word is truth. Did, did y'all see that? So you don't worship God according to the pattern of some man or some group. You worship him according to his word because he said my word is truth and my word is spirit. So if I'm going to worship him, I'm going to have to worship him according to the word. D did that make sense? I know I got a cold and maybe I ain't, can't see right, but we okay this far? All right. Now, because some people call themselves worshiping God that will not accept Jesus, that's not worship. Now, you can stay in the temple all day, but that ain't worship. Because watch what God says in John 5, 22 and 23. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Now, watch verse 23. That all men should honor the son. Watch this. That all men should honor the son. Go ahead. Even as they honor the father. Watch this. He that honoreth not the son. He that honoreth not the son. Who? What's the son's name? Jesus. What? What? What happens, Doctor Matthews? Honoreth not the father which has sent him. God says, "How are you going to worship me when you don't honor my son, who makes me known?" Did, did y'all see this? Andrew, so any religion that does not recognize Jesus as God is not worshiping God, even though they say they are. And we know a whole lot of people out there who say, I have no problem with God, but Jesus is not the son of God. And then they're going to worship and God going, what? that's not worship because you're not worshiping me in spirit and in truth because you're not worshiping me according to the word according to the word I said you got to honor my son and you don't think he's God so therefore I don't care what you're doing in church God said you ain't worshiping me because you don't know what you're doing so it takes us as salt to educate people so that they can worship God because they can't worship him on their own 
You remember when we had the bulletin, when we had bulletins, because COVID stopped a lot of things. We have it now, and we do it every Sunday when we start. After We do the announcements first. And what do we do after we do the announcements? Hmm? But we do something before we do the praise. <coughs> yeah, we read the scripture. You know what that's called? It used to be in the bulletin. I don't know if you remember from the bulletin. It's called call to worship. There's a call to worship. That call gets everybody on the same page. It's a call to worship God. It's a call to worship. If you look throughout the Bible, you would never see that the people just, well, I'm going to show you one thing where the people did. Worship, corporate worship, always has a leader. Always. Because it ain't going to just happen. It ain't going to just break out. I'm talking about corporate worship. Okay? Let me show you this. Some Psalm. Go to Psalm 95. Or Dr. Matthews is going to read it. It's going to be on the screen. Watch verses 1 through 7. Watch this. And watch where worship comes in. Watch this, Charmaine. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Okay, he's calling them, Israel, to worship. He said, oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Keep going. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us make a joyful noise. They praise him. They praise him, right? Watch this. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us come before. And thanksgiving literally means an extension of the hand, right? It, that, that's what thanksgiving means, an extension of the hand. So when folk tell us to clap or put our hands up, we're looking at them like they're stupid. And they're actually telling us what the Bible tells us to do. <coughs> Keep going. And make a joyful noise. It, it shouldn't hurt. Make a joy. God been good to you. Your noise should be joyful. Don't come here. Ugh. That's a noise. Ugh. Make a joyful noise to him with With psalms Right keep going And if you want to know why Here it is Dr. Matthew go ahead For the Lord is a great God He's a great God And a great king above all gods Uh huh watch verse 4 In his hand are the deep places of the earth Uh huh The strength of the hills is his awesome Oh he talking it up he praising it but he, he getting them Watch this The sea is, the sea is his, his. And he made it. Watch this. And his hands formed the dry land. Now watch, watch this. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He didn't start verse 1 saying, oh, come, let us worship. He's calling everybody to worship. He's praising God, getting the people into praising. And now he said, oh, come, let us do what? Worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Watch verse 7. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today if we, if ye will hear his voice. Okay. Psalm 96 1 through 9. Watch this. Watch well, how Odessa, watch how he sets this up. He's calling Israel to worship. He says what? Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Listen, if God has done something new for you, then sing a new song. You still sang in 1948. There ain't nothing wrong with that, but if he'd done something new with new experiences, then you make up a new song. He says, sing unto... Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Watch this, keep going. Sing unto the Lord... Bless his name. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Mm. Declare. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Now, in verse, keep it there, Deborah. In verse 2, it said, bless his name. How do we bless God? We know how he blesses us. But how do we bless him? We ain't got nothing. How do we bless God? Because he told us in verse 2, bless his name. How do we bless God? We know how he blesses us. He bless you with health, home, power, healing. How do we bless him? 
by telling people yeah because you can praise him without telling nobody about what he's done we bless God God blesses us with good stuff we bless him when we tell folk how God has blessed us it's telling about what he did for us because I can praise him by myself but they, I, I can still not witness to nobody that's just me but when I start telling somebody what he did now I'm blessing him because we're telling of his goodness gets back to that evangelism okay keep going for all the gods of the nations are idols but the Lord made the heavens uh -huh. honor and majesty are before him mm -hmm. strength and beauty are in his sanctuary give unto the Lord O ye kindreds of the people give unto the Lord glory and strength give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name see there that's what we do when we tell folk and do what bring an offering and come into his courts and now what happens in verse 9 oh worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness why didn't he start with that he could have started verse 1 with that you don't start there because people have to be called and led in the worship now he said oh worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness fear before him all the earth okay go back to my sheet there now let me show you something Matthew 2 and 11 watch this y'all know this about the wise men right it wasn't three they brought three gifts and see this is why once again people need you be to, I'm talking all like I've been drinking liquor in there this is why people need to be educated because they're proverbial and I'm going to show you in today's scripture just, just with this scripture the proverbial thing that black men say is they don't read the, it's a white man's bible it's Jesus was dog blah 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 it's all white and all white and all white I'm going to show you in today's scripture that it's not true you will not find a more Afrocentric book than the Bible but you won't find that on Facebook you just believe what people post Mike Hightower sent me something the other day Delbert they said Jesus wasn't crucified he was married they showed him walking with some lady that was his wife I'm like who make who what what in God's name and you will believe that and won't believe this Jesus <coughs> watch this Matthew 2 11 watch this and when they were come into the house they saw the young child with Mary his mother first of all watch this again this is why people this is why we're the salt of the earth and this is why we, we are valuable and this is why people need us to know the truth it said the wise man came to the house when you go every day December to the manger scene they ain't in the house they got the, the they in the manger well, well at this time he two years old he ain't in no manger the shepherds went to the manger not the wise they went to a house so the scene is jacked up because Jesus, wise men didn't come to, a, to the crib I mean didn't come to the that crib they came to the crib you know we call the house the crib they came to the house. What they do, Dr. Matthews? And fell down. They saw the young child with Mary's mother. And what they do? And worshiped him. And they fell down and worshiped him. Worship. What does worship mean? I t told you when we started. Estimation. Value. Worth. They worshiped him. Dr. Matthews, was there a piano in the house? The scripture don't tell us. Uh, no. Was there an organ in the house? Uh-uh. Was there a choir in the house? Uh-uh. Was there a preacher in the house? Uh-uh. Too many of us Christians think we got to be in church to worship. You can worship in your car, in your house. They valued and esteemed him. They worshiped him. And, and, and they ain't do like us. They ain't worship him empty-handed. Watch what they did. 
And when they had opened their treasure. Ooh, stop right there. Worship causes you to open your treasure because the very word worship means estimation, value. They valued him and they opened their treasures. We value him and won't tithe. And you value him? <laughs> and what they present to him, Dr. Matthews? They presented unto him gifts. Gifts. They had what? Gold. Gold. And frankincense. Frankincense. And myrrh. And myrrh. Now watch this. What do these things mean? Gold was a symbol and is a symbol of kingship. Gold is a symbol of kingship as well as it was practical because Mary and Joseph were poor. We know that because of the sacrifice. They say, bring two turtle doves. They say, well, if you, if you broke, bring some pigeons because you can go to you know, the park and get one of them. Mary and Joseph were poor because they brought turtle doves to the sacrifice. I mean, uh, pigeons because they couldn't afford the turtle doves. So gold helped to finance them when he sent them away into Egypt. They can't go nowhere. You can't travel nowhere without money. Right? Remember I said gold as a symbol of his kingship. These astrologers left east and headed west because, they, and it took them about two, about two years to get there, which shows you the value they knew because that star set Watch what they say in Matthew 2, 1 and 2. Watch this, Dr. Matthews. Remember, gold is a symbol of kingship. Watch what they say when they get there. Watch this. 1 and 2. Watch this. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east. It wasn't 1, 2, 3. They just had three gifts. To Jerusalem. And what did they do, Dr. Matthews? Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Stop right there. They didn't say, is there? They said, where is he? Charmaine, that's born king. The gift, gold, symbolized kingship. They said, no, no, he ain't going to be voted in. He's born king. And they said, we have seen his star in the east, and we come to do what to him? Worship him. They went two and a half years, uh, about, about two years, to get to him to do one thing worship him. We won't go down the street to the church. And we love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitted every groan, long as trouble around. You quit saying that lying mess. They said, Where is he that's born king? Watch John 19, 17 to 22. Watch Pilate with his scaredy, scaredy cat self, but he still did something and said, I'm going to leave that here. Watch this. Keep going, Dr. Matthew, or and, start rather. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. Watch this. Where they crucified him and two others with him on either side one and Jesus in the midst. Jesus in the middle. Watch this. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. Watch what he put up there. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Watch this. The folks said, uh-uh. Watch this. This title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in all the languages that the people could understand. What were they? It was written in Hebrew, the Greek and Latin. Watch 21. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, write not the king of the Jews but that he said I am king of oh, the no, Jews oh no no don't call him a king don't put that up there we want you to write put he said watch what Pilate said in 22 Pilate answered what have I written I have written Pilate a broke clock can give you the correct time twice a day Pilate said what I've written I've written in other words he is a king right that's what the gold symbolize let's look at the second gift frankincense which was an incense that was a symbol of deity but now watch this remember I told y'all about the Afrocentric thing 
Frankincense originated in Arabia and Northern Africa. They brought frankincense. Where does frankincense come from? Arabia and Northern Africa. They didn't use Jimmy Kimmel to bring it. Dr. Matthews, if I'm bringing something from Africa, <laughs> it just makes sense for me to be from, to, okay. Frankincense is a dried resin from the trees of the genus Boswella used in perfumes and incense for thousands of years. Historically, frankincense was a highly valued commodity. Worship estimating, right? Myrrh, which was the third thing. That's an embalming oil. That's a symbol of death. So even though they were bringing him gifts, those gifts, gold honored him as a king, and we can take that to king of the Jude God. The frankincense honored him as deity and this indicated he was going to die in the gifts that they brought myrrh is also a dried resin from Arabia and northern Africa these little scenes we have ain't no black people in them they white men the scene wrong the color of the people wrong the wise men came to a house <laughs> not the barn that's where the shepherds went and I think now because of the times they put one black they figure well we gotta at least put somebody light skinned in there <laughs> but they ain't putting all three of them in there I'm driving to work big old billboard on 94 the movie coming out of Jesus just says blonde haired and blue eyed biggest day on that big old poster but we didn't do that That's we know who putting that up there everybody that reads the bible knows that Jesus didn't look like that but it's been so ingrained in our head because that's the picture that was in most of our houses even though we were black and now if you tell somebody he ain't that they're black folk will fight you there's still black churches Henry to this day still black churches with a picture of a white Jesus in there on the wall now everybody in your congregation black and y'all got them staring at a white man I'm telling the truth y'all I ain't trying to be funny and y'all wonder why young black boys ain't coming into church well take Peter Smith down he had been up there so long y'all think that's what it looked like no Jesus was probably the color of Portia's coat Hebrews were dark skinned people why do you think he told them go to Africa and hide the baby if he was an Asian baby he'd stick out like a store thumb in Africa that wouldn't make sense I'm going to be from Ben Harbor. I'm going to go to St. Joe to hide. Huh? They're going to catch me. <laughs> you see why Jesus told us we're important? Salt. And you got people staying out of church for reasons that they don't have no clue about. They didn't read something. Myrrh. Northern Africa, Arabia, from the thorny shrubs and trees of the genus Comophora, used in perfumes, incense, and medicine for thousands of years. I'm showing you, I showed you all that to show you how much you are needed and that people can't worship God without salt because you can't worship him unless you worship him in spirit and in truth and worshiping him in spirit and in truth means by the word of the word. And they need us to educate them in the word. You see how important you are? So then, getting back, the original hearers recognized the compliment of being called salt right away. And especially James and John, who are the lucrative fishes, fishing business. Watch Matthew 4, 21. Let me show you how I know it was lucrative. Watch this. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, 
James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship. Stop right there. So it said they was in a ship, not a boat, a ship. A ship. If you had a ship, you had to have some loot, some green stamps, some seed notes, like Bonner got. They was in a ship, not a boat. They had a lucrative fishing business, right? So now, okay. The only way a fisherman could get their product to the market in good condition was to salt it and pack it between layers of salt. Anybody in here old enough to go in the meat house and see all that salted stuff? I've seen it on like TV and stuff. I ain't never been in one, but I've heard about them with, you know, Pastor Morton. Anybody been in a meat house where all that salt and, so sister, you know, a couple of, you know exactly what we're talking about. That's the way you kept your, there wasn't no refrigeration. I mean, before that, you had to keep it fresh some way, and what salt did was help keep it fresh. And then they went to the, uh, what they call them things people still call them the ice box it was a literal ice box then but we call ice box refrigerators we just call it the ice box but we knew it was a refrigerator not a refrigerator but y'all remember where they had literally ice in the box a box with ice in it ice box what the salt would do is it would keep the fish fresh and edible and y'all know with fish too y'all, now listen that's about the uh, how can I put this I mean, ham, beef, and all that. Listen, when fish go bad and stink and ru- y'all know what I'm talking about. It is, ooh, hamburger, okay, you little smell. And it's like raw, not, not raw, but like, you ever smelled of spoiled egg and it run you out the house? I, it stinks to high heavens. Fish, fish stink when it's good and cooked. Especially perch, that'll run you out the house. So you had to put something on there to keep it fresh. And what they did was use salt. Right? So indeed, being labeled by the master as salt was and is very vital. That's why people who work in hot climates often find it necessary to take uh, take salt tablets. In Australia, they have a horrid brown paste that they spread on their toast. It would remind us of a little bit of, of axle grease that's gone bad on the car. Tommy and Andrew know what I'm talking about. It's called Vegemite. That's what it's called. You may remember that sound down under from the 80s, the Vegemite sandwich. It's a song down under. Uh, it's an 80s song. Y'all won't know. Y'all was listening to Luther and Teddy Pendergrass. It's called Vegemite. Australians grow up eating Vegemite like we eat peanut butter. And one of the practical, practical aspects of it is the high salt content that it contains. So Israel 2,000 years ago didn't have Vegemite, so salt was the key to their health, their well-being, their strength, and their vitality. So watch this. Keep that there, Delbert. Keep that there. Watch this. If, if God has called you salt, then that means that you are the key to the health of the world. You are the key to the well-being of the world. You and me are the key to being the strength in the world and the vitality in the world because he said we're the salt of the earth he actually said it okay so then thus far we looked at all the good that salt does we've looked at its visibility its value and its vitality but for all that salt can do is followed by a but in other words salt can have an extremely destructive side as well uh oh uh oh Jesus tells us in Matthew 5 13 but if the salt has lost his savor by that he's talking about flavor he said wherewith shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men did you catch that Delbert when salt is no longer working for the well-being of society for flavoring for preserving for healing making better then it's only good for one thing throw it out ain't nowhere in the world I want Jesus to ever look at me and say throw him out he ain't doing nothing throw him out but Andrew why not just put it in the dump? Jesus said, throw it out and trodden it under foot of me. Why not just put it in the garbage can? Why the reference to walking on it? 
Remember now, just as the original hearers would have easily understood the compliment, Portia, they would also have easily understood the condemnation. Remember that these were the days before asphalt or concrete. Remember y'all, right? Salt, Andrew, would sterilize the ground. It would literally steal the vitality from the ground. In the Old Testament, watch this, after an army would conquer a city, they would sow salt through the fields and this would cause utter desolation and nothing will grow. Look at Judges 9, 44 through 45. Watch this. And Amalek and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. Watch this. And the two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them. They killed them. Watch this. And Amalek fought against the city all that day. And he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city and sowed it with salt. See there? So my brothers and my sisters, the most destructive force that the church has to be concerned with today are not thugs. It's Christians who have lost their saltiness. Not the prostitute, not the dope dealer, not the fentanyl. It's Christians who have lost their saltiness. Do you, can you imagine? Those who once were good, but now are being sown for destruction. Folks started in church. Now they're out there telling you, you don't need to go to church. Jesus ain't real. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. And all this. What, what did, that ain't where you start. How did you get? <laughs> I don't need church. Church you did that, that, brainwashed, blah, blah, blah. So you used to be salt. <laughs> and now you're just throwing out there and throwing stuff out there. You see, every Christian will be a witness. Every one of them. They will either be a witness to the changing power of Jesus or against the changing power of Jesus. I mean, Andrew, and I know how you do it. I, I, I know it's a rhetorical question. People walk the aisle, they get emotional, something happened, and oh, Jesus, I, I, I. you walk down the aisle, you do that, you come to church a few times, you join the choir, you join the ministry, you do this, and six months later, you back out there. Man, that God stuff ain't real. Like, well, what, what happened? What made you get up? What, what happened? Well, I know what happened. I know exactly what happened. It's like the pastor, Portia who told a colleague I have 800 members in my church how many of them are active his friend inquired all of them came to reply 600 of them are active for the Lord and the rest are active for the devil they all active Yeah, all of them busy. All of them are witnessing. It's just that some witnessing for the Lord and some witnessing for the devil. And it's bad, real bad, when the devil uses a Christian to do his work. We know he's going to use his people. We expect that. It's real bad when you, the folk that's supposed to be on your team. If I'm going through, and I ain't going to be going through it, but if I'm passing through Podunk, Mississippi, and it's a certain group of people, and I get called names, I would expect that from them. I don't expect or shouldn't have to run from somebody that looked like me. I shouldn't have to run from nobody. But, but I should feel much safer around you than I'm around a clans person. Because you, my bro, you ain't supposed to harm what they ain't either, but y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah. 
So it's bad when Christians work for the devil. That's real bad. I mean, that's real bad. <laughs> and Andrew, here's the thing. While they're working for the devil, they actually think they're worshiping God. And Jesus is telling them, like he told the, the woman, you don't, y'all don't even know what you're doing. Because to worship him in spirit and the truth means worship him according to the word, by the word. So we just showed you what the word. See, because the word says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. That's the word. Now you tell them, you ain't got to be in church every week. What well, well, the word says, forsake not. You see what I'm saying? You're not worshiping according to the word. You're worshiping according to you. You ain't got to be in there every week. Well, you ain't got to go to the casino every week, but you go. With your broke self. And watch this. And then you come to the place that you don't have to go every week and ask for money. Can you help pay my rent? Well, wait a minute. Go to the casino. That's where you spend the rest of your. What you coming here for? I ain't got to go there all the time. So. <laughs> You won't come here to worship God, but you come here to get the money from the people who worship God. That don't even make sense. I don't want nothing to do with your God, but I want y'all's money. And my answer is no, because right on the money is saying, in God we trust, and you don't trust them. Not today. You ain't, my name ain't William Young. Y'all tell me he used to give everything out. My name is Timothy. <laughs> I ain't giving stuff out. Andrew, why? So you just walk off the street. Now, we done been in here blood, sweat, tears, praying, tithing, everything. And you just going to walk off the street and we give you money? That's a bad steward. Well, ain't you supposed to help people? Yeah, we educate them and let them know you're making bad decisions. That's helping them. Because if nobody gets you right, you're just going to run from church to church to church to church. Well, let's get some education. Let's grow up and say, wait a minute, how many decisions you, you know, how much is your cable bill? $400? Well, okay. Okay, there's some things we can curb. You, you see what I'm saying, <laughs> Dr. Matthew? You know, I mean, we can, you know, we can, you know, because the car you just pulled up in, you're sitting on 20s and they got rims and everything. But you need money from us. Your hair done better than ours. My parishioner's hair don't look like yours. And, and just give you money? No. Why would we do that? See, thought y'all was the church. Oh, here we go again. Don't let that stuff bother you when people bring up that nonsense. That's malarkey. If you give away your money, now you do what you want. And obviously the Lord will give you discernment. He'll tell you who to help and he'll, because the most folk I help and give money to, Dr. Matthews, is the ones that don't ask me. I just know God tell me to give it to them. So it ain't like I ain't helping nobody. I just ain't helping everybody come knock on the door. Because I give money to folk that they ain't even asked for it. I just hear God told me to, and that's it. You can, I need the diapers for my kid. You got a personal problem, dude. Michael Jackson said, if you can't have a baby, can't take care of the baby, don't have a baby. He said that didn't want to be starting something. You want to be starting something. Now you can't continue nothing. That's in the song, y'all. He said, he said, if you can't feed the baby, don't have the baby. I got a couch and layaway at Big Lots and I need to get it out. That ain't my problem. I have no problem telling people that ain't my problem. None. <laughs> but we can educate you. We can do a finance class. We can help. I ain't just giving. That's not helping you, giving you. You ain't never learn nothing. And you ain't going to have to do nothing because people keep giving you something. And not you all because I got the best, you know ladies in the world but ladies make it easy when they let the guy lay up with them and don't work and take care of them like who ain't no where you get that idea from where did God tell you to take care of a grown man it ain't in there Joyce nowhere and we make it so easy he leave this one she put him out he go right over here to Pam and come on baby and then people ask you tell about why won't he work he don't have to 
And guess what? It ain't him that ain't got no clothes or shoes. It's her kids because he taking them. <laughs> Did am I telling the truth? Yeah. It's the kids suffering, not the boyfriend. Because she giving them. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. That ain't helping people. You don't value yourself when you just let somebody live and do whatever they want to do. You going to work. He dropping you off at work in your car and late picking you up and the gas take on empty. He didn't just drive around by the creek. He went to Marshall because the gas wouldn't be out. <laughs> all right, all right. <coughs> Y'all can blame that on the chest cold. <laughs> you and me got to decide who we gonna be a witness to and whether we're going to be salt that's thrown out or salt that's used by God. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for another expression of your goodness. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for showing us how valuable we are. Lord, people can't even worship without salt. People can't worship without us. There's a call to worship. People need to be led into worship. They need to be led in the scriptures, Father. Thank you for putting such a high value upon us. Thank you for choosing us with all of our mistakes, with all of our kinks, with all of our dents, with all of our problems, you chose us to go tell other folk about a God who can solve your problems, who can knock the kinks out by his grace and by his love and by the power of his blood. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be witnesses for you. You bless us when you do good to us. And we bless you when we tell others about what you've done to us. Bless us that we bless others as we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Did the lesson make sense? All right. So you see how valuable you are. Yeah. All right.